the showcase started with Nakima. She's in the house. And uh, Anita, she's here also. Like I said, I want to make each guest welcome. This is their first time joining us here on the certain one. And I'm so excited to meet their acquaintances. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring Nakima on. She has a powerful testimony. That's how I got connected with her. Mr. Tim says, listen, I got to introduce you to this young lady, Nakima T. Lee. She's got a powerful testimony. You need to get on your show. You need to let her talk about it. It's going to inspire and motivate people. You've got to bring her on. And you know how I do on a certain one. We bring them on, those who do have testimonies and not afraid to show them. Because the testimony is not to be meant to be hidden. Your testimony is meant to be shared. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and bring her on. Welcome to the show, Sister Nakima. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to have you. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for having me, Vanessa. My pleasure, my delight. As I was mentioned in the intro, I was like admonished, Vanessa, you got to bring her on. She has a testimony mm-hmm. among testimonies. So let's go ahead and break bread. Go ahead and introduce yourself to our listening audience. I do have your bio, but I want you to go ahead and do it. I don't want to sound generic. I want to sound right. So um, go ahead and introduce yourself, and let's jump right into it. Absolutely. Well, my name is Nikima Lee, and I'm an intimate relationship coach. And basically what that means is that I help people fall in love with themselves so that they can fall in love with others, the very short of it. And the reason why I got into it was because I was always on a search for love. When I was 11 years old, my mother decided that being my mother wasn't something that she wanted to do anymore. And I came home from school one day to find my mother packed, ready to go, and that I was unable to go with her. And ever since that, what I call the tidal wave of my life, um, I was always searching for love, always searching for a sense of security. So I would find myself doing things so that people would never leave me, so that I would never be rejected, so I would never be left alone. And that led me to being on my own from the age of 14. And by the age of 16, I found myself on the street selling my body for money, for food, just the basics of life. Um, Through all of that, I still was able to graduate high school, go off to college, um, but my mind was never where it needed to be. I was always focused on finding love, finding security, finding someone who would never throw me away. And I kind of lived this sort of roller coaster of a life and um, I've gotten married and I've got two beautiful children, but I was never stable. And at one time um, in 2009, I found myself pursuing my dreams, right? I was out here being an entrepreneur. I had left my $70,000 a year job, was making about $700 in a full year. I got bill collectors and eviction notices. And here I am, 30, 31 years old. I have three college degrees and I have two mouths to feed. And it just became so completely overwhelming for me. I dropped my children off, one at my grandmother's house, the other one to their father's house and decided that I no longer wanted to, to, to survive. I no longer wanted to play this thing that they call life because I had been successful at failing and succeeding and, and finding disappointment and finding success, and I just was tired of doing it on my own. So in 2009, I decided I didn't want to do it anymore, found myself in a bathtub full of water, with my wrist cut and a body full of pills and decided that this is where I wanted to end it all. And Mm -hmm. in doing so, I had a friend who came to me, you know, saw my plea for help on Facebook and was like, do you really want to die? And I was like, yes, I really, truly want to quit. And he pushed me under the water. And it was, it was really so surreal because I felt free at that moment. I felt like, yes, I can let go. I don't have to do this anymore. I don't have to struggle. I don't have to do anything. And I took a breath. And in that breath, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to die. Oh, my goodness. Help me up. Help me up. So when he pulled me out, he said something that just really pierced my spirit. And he said, you don't want to die. You just want the pain to go away. And ever since then, I realized that I just wanted the pain to go away, the pain of having to find my own way and having to have to find my own way for almost 20 something years and making wrong decisions and then recorrecting myself and finding my new way. I didn't want to do that on my own anymore. And what I realized is that I was never really on my own. I was never really by myself. 
So once I saw that, once I was able to embrace that, I took to 2010 and I just discovered who I was. I I edified myself, not just in the word of God, but also in other teachers who had insight, the things that I didn't know and understand about life. And I really just dialed down into the Nikema Lee of life. And when I came out of 2010, I wrote my very first book, which was 30 Days to Freedom, Becoming Authentic. Um, And it's like a guide to falling in love with yourself because that's what was missing in my life. And when I learned how to fall in love with myself and to be in love with myself, the universe just opened up. Life got so much brighter and better and beautiful, and I decided to just keep running with that. And here I am today, um, excited about who I am, excited about the love in my life, excited about where my life is going, and just, just happy, just truly, truly living a happy life. For those who are just tuning in, sure. this is the 31 Block Talk Radio Show. We have a profound guest, Nakima Lee. Powerful testimony. Listen now. I don't want to leave this clip in a cliffhanger moment, but it is what it is. I want you to go ahead and go ahead and call your friends. Tell them that the certain one is live on the air. We have some wonderful guests. Bishop Bloom is in the house. Nakima Lee is in the house. I'm so excited to have authors here such as Arnita the Shields. Okay, you guys? So we're going to put a pin in this right quick. We're going to talk about her bathtub incident. She found herself in the bathtub tub, taking pills, she sliced her wrist, and she wanted to end it. We want to see how she was able to rebound. And our topic tonight is Watch God Move. Are you a single Christian woman who's wondering where Mr. Right is? If so, I believe I can help you. Hi, my name is Afi Pittman, creator of Author of Faith Enterprises, the place of encouragement for today's single woman. I know firsthand how frustrating it is to just want to meet and marry Mr. Right already and then to do everything you know how to do in dating and romance and at the end of the day still be single. But God used some very difficult situations in my life to teach me the art of contentment and how to prepare for marriage. If you're ready to live a full life, free from worry that you'll ever marry Mr. Right and you want to marry God's way, I want you to join me at authorofmyfaith.com. Start by signing up for the Single and Preparing e-newsletter to get free articles, video devotionals, and company news. I also post new blog devotionals every week, along with articles on dating, healthy eating, and living. And you can also subscribe for those as well. So again, this is Afi Pittman with Author of Faith Enterprises, the place of encouragement for today's single woman at authorofmyfaith.com. I so look forward to hearing from you, and I would be honored to serve you on your journey to Mr. Right. The Certain Ones has become a movement in motivation and inspiration. Our mantra is aspiring to inspire. Have you subscribed to The Certain Ones on YouTube? Log on today at www.youtube.com slash The Certain Ones and join in the movement too. Enjoy daily doses of inspiration and motivation. Are you ready? Let's go get it. And now back to the show with your host, Vanessa Richardson, and her special guests. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and bring my guest back on, Nikema. Welcome back. How are you? I'm excited. Uh, you know what? We left them in, like in a cliffhanger moment. I love those moments. But let's go ahead right. and get back in your testimony. You're, here you are, Nikema. Um, you're making $70,000, maybe $70,000 on your job. You have two kids. Mm-hmm. And in your mind, your frame of mind is, I'm successful at failing. And you just wanted to give it up. Listen, you guys, she has three degrees, advanced degrees. And she had two mouths to feed, okay? She was looking for love in all the wrong places. So now she finds herself in a bathtub full of water, wristlet, and taking pills. Nakima, take us in that moment. After that, your friend came and said, do you really want to die? And your answer without hesitation was yes. Tell us. Yes. How did you come out that dark period? How What happened? Go ahead. and How did you come out? Rise up. Well, once he pushed me under and I really decided to give out and, and, and take that breath and he pulled me out and said, you don't want to die. You just want the pain to go away. 
The next day, I checked myself into a mental hospital right there in Green, uh, Greensboro, North Carolina, and because mm-hmm. that's where I was living at the time. And I was laying on the floor just crying and bawling and trying to figure out how did I get here in my life. And I realized that it wasn't the life that I was leading, the lifestyle that I had had. It was really the, the broken 11-year-old that was still in me when my mother walked out the door and said, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to do you anymore. And for have to have somebody like that, I mean, a boyfriend leaves, a husband leaves, is a one thing, but when a parent leaves, and it's the only parent you've ever known, there's, a, there's something that's just taken away from you. And my spirit searched for that completion. Now, my mother wasn't like... Um, you know, up the street around a corner. You know how some parents live right across the street from their kids and they don't even know that they're, that's their mother or their father. My mother moved from New Jersey to South Carolina. So it wasn't like I could just get up and go. There was times where I wrote letters begging for her to come back. Can I come with you? And and to be consistently rejected, always found myself trying to find love in something else, whether it was food um, I became a binge eater where I would just eat, 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 eat until I couldn't eat no more, um, whether it was drugs. I've tried every drug that there's possibly imaginable except heroin um, or whether it was sex. I found myself in sexual uh, places that were just no child had no place to be. At the age of 16, literally walking the street, getting paid to to put my mouth on things that no Mm -hmm. 16-year-old should ever do. Having to decide, okay, do I go out with this guy for the the dinner he's going to give me and the place he's going to let me sleep at just so that I can get up and go to school by 7 o'clock in the morning? Those were the decisions that I was making at 15, 16 years old. So you, you couple all of that with you go to school, you become a basketball player, you become a award winning track star, you graduate, you not only graduate, but you go to college. You, you're successful at college. People admire yeah. you. You're great. Yeah. And to know, okay, I did that. And, and, and I got married. I had a baby. I did what everybody said I was supposed to do the way that people yeah. said I was supposed to do it. But my marriage failed because I didn't know how to yeah. be a wife. I didn't know how to love yeah. somebody else. Nobody ever taught me that. So I harpooned and sabotaged that relationship. I ended up divorced, living in Hawaii with a kid. And I was like, oh, my, how do I do this? Go back to what I know how to do. I know how to sell my body for money. I know how to manipulate people with my body and with my mind. Let me do that. And I realized that after I started dating a married man and he would come over my house every day, and he would play with my kid, and we would eat dinner, and we would make love, and he would go home. Mm -hmm. And it tore me up every day. Like, why Mm -hmm. are you leaving me? And he was just like, I love my wife. Like, how do you love her? How do you do that? And it wasn't until I read Juanita Bynum's No More Sheets. And I read that book, and I was on the floor, honey. I was on the floor, and I knew that my life was going to be different from that moment forward. And I read that book in January 4th. I will never forget it. January 4th. I read that book and I had a silent moment. And what happened to me was, yes, I was dating a married man. Yes, I was living a lifestyle that was unbecoming of our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. But I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to be anything else. I didn't know who I was or what I was. So I ended up having my moment, and there was Nick Kima. There was Nikki. Nikki was out on the street. Nikki was pretty. Everybody wanted to talk to Nikki. Everybody wanted to be with Nikki. But then there was Nick Kima, and Nick Kima was in the back alley covered in this, like, alien mucus film, right? And God reached down into that film, and he pulled me out, and he cradled me in his arms, and he looked me in my face and said that everything was going to be all right. 
And since that day, I understood that I was more than anything that anybody had ever said to me. From my father saying I was never going to be anything, to my grandmother saying you was never going to be no more than what your mother was, to everybody, you know, who said, I'll be there for you, but never really was there for me. I knew at that moment that God was going to be there for me. No matter what, I was sold out for Jesus. I was sold out going to church at 5 o'clock in the morning, laying prostrate, touching hands, speaking in tongues. You know, Mm -hmm. six days out the week, I'm in the house of the Mm -hmm. Lord. And I understood, you know, I I had a better foundation as Mm -hmm. to where I needed to be in life and where I wanted to go. So, yes, fast forward. I found a new husband. I, 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 I had a new baby. Everything was going away. I'm successful again. I've started my new job. I've, I've gotten my master's. I'm working in my field. I'm, I'm climbing the corporate ladder from 72000 to 70000 in less than three years. I'm living wow. in North Carolina, making great wow. money, just doing it wonderful. But I was unhappy in my marriage because I did not love myself. And I wanted my husband to love me, not only for him, but for me too. And he just was like, I'm not doing that. That's not my job, Nikima. And I'm like, what do you mean? You're my husband. You're supposed to love me no matter what. He's like, no, that's not what I signed up for. And I was like, what do you mean? And we argued for the 364 days that we were married. We argued for about six months of those. Consistent, like, I need this from you. He was like, this is not my job or my role to give you that. And I didn't understand what he meant. I didn't understand what he meant. So here I am, 2008. My husband has left me. I've decided to go off and 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 start selling uh, adult toys to women because that was my calling. I knew, if nothing else, I knew I knew sex. I knew sex. Mm-hmm. Up, down, backwards, forward, I knew sex. So I'm selling sex right. toys to women. And these women are challenging me. But I've never had an orgasm, Nikima. I've never done this. I've never I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't love my husband or my husband doesn't I'm like what are you asking me for? I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I took it upon myself to really dig down and ask God like is this really what I'm supposed to do? And I took the yeah. time to learn the answers to what people needed to know. Because I knew I just didn't know how mm-hmm. to communicate the knowledge that I had. So I spent that year trying to build a business, trying to build a brand and a Bible belt where I'm talking about sex on stage and how great it is to please your husband and how wonderful it is to be available to your husband and be submissive and all these other taboo things that people don't want to listen to when they're in a a setting, like a a club or something like that. So Mm -hmm. I said, okay, I struggle. The lights are being turned off. The eviction notices are on the table. And I'm like, I don't have anybody that I can go to. I don't have a mom that I can go to and say, mom, help me. I don't have a husband that I can fall back on and say, help me. I don't have a brother or a cousin or grandmother that says, Nikima, let me help you figure life out. And I had to do it on my own. And I have been pulling up my own bootstraps for years, time and time and time and time and time again. And I was tired. I was tired of doing it. I just was so tired. So by the time I got to that cold floor in that mental hospital, I was done. I had no more to give. And that's where you have to be in life sometimes in order for God to move the the most in your life. When you don't have nothing else to give. When you know there's nothing that you can do and it's nothing but God. When you know that it's nothing but God, then you can do anything. And I came out of there knowing that I could do all things, not some things, not a little bit of things, things. but all things. And I could do all things. And I, and it really solidified my faith. And And a lot of people say, well, how is it that you talk about God and you talk about sex in the same conversation. I said, because it's not the sex that I talk about. It's the intimacy. Mm-hmm. And when you yes, understand what you. intimacy is, thank you. You, the, mm-hmm. you see into me. If I allow yes. you to see into me, I allow yes. for you to see the God in me. I reveal that to you. And I become vulnerable to you to a, to a space where the physical part is just extra. But when I let mm-hmm. you in mentally, spiritually, emotionally, then I, yes. then we're one. 
And a lot of people don't get that when it comes to sex. They think, oh, well, you teach me how to spin and teach me how to, you know, suck and turn and flip. And it's like, no, I can Mm -hmm. teach you how to do that with the greatest person in the world. But if you're not mentally, spiritually, and emotionally whole, you're going to mess it up. Say you know, it. harpoon it. it and destroy it. So even with this latest book that I have out, Dr. Lee's Ultimate Guide to a Rockstar Sex Life, a lot mm-hmm. of tools and tips are in there, yes, but it talks about mastering yourself first. It talks about mm-hmm. accepting who you are and accepting yes. others for who they are. And it talks mm-hmm. about demanding the best from yourself and demanding the best from others. Long before I even talk about a sit and a spin or anything else, you've got to know who you are. And that's what it took me because I could lay down with a person physically without thought. But mm-hmm. I would never give of myself emotionally. I would never give mm-hmm. of myself spiritually. And it wasn't mm-hmm. until I was able to know who I was and I was like, no, I'm not laying down with you. I determined mm-hmm. that every time somebody entered into me, it was a, uh, every stroke was a mile. Every yes. stroke was a mile. As in, if every time I got in my car and went to the store, I depreciated the value of my car. So every time I let somebody enter into me and stroke me, they devalued mm-hmm. the value of my vagina based yes. on the fact that I want to yes. be married, the fact that I want to be whole in a relationship. Yes. You devalue yes. me. Now I can become yes. vintage, yes. But who really wants to drive around a three hundred thousand dollar mile Mercedes, even though it is from nineteen forty two? Nobody. Exactly. Nobody wants exactly. to do that. It becomes a classic and it sits in the garage. That's it. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want that for myself. I wanted more. So I became very yes. I became very particular about what was what went inside of me because I, I yes. believed in me. I loved me. And when I got that Oh, my God, the sex that I do have, excuse my language, but when I do have it, it is spectacular. Mm-hmm. It is it is mind-blowing. <laughs> it is exciting. It is real. It is intuitive. It is emotional. It is all, it is all in. And, it's, and it's, mm-hmm. that's what I teach. It's, it's understanding yes. that aspect of it. Yeah, I can teach you how to do something special, but if you're not who you need to be, if you don't love mm-hmm. you, for who you are and what you bring mm-hmm. to the table, then you stop having sex for a minute. Just sit down yes. and get yourself together because when you yes. do it, you don't want to waste it. You don't want to waste yes. it. You yes. don't want to waste it. But that's oh, my story. You are speaking. <laughs> you are speaking. And my open Whippy voice is speaking. <laughs> yes. See, you know what? I want to bring you back on for an hour. Like, listen, you guys, I'm so blessed. Her testimony is powerful. This young lady is... um. I like the term you use, intimate relationship coach. You got to know who you are to please your husband. Sometimes mm-hmm. we try to be fulfilled with our mates and all that. And that's mm-hmm. just contributed, you know, but you have to know who you are and what it is. I say this all the time. We want people to give us our identity, define me. Who am I? I'm lost. But you have to find how mm-hmm. who you are. And I love that you are certified law of attraction guide. Ah, you are just a woman of many hats. And you're saying so much, Nakima. You got to promise me that you got to come back on the show. Say yes. I would love to. Yes, yes, I would love to. <laughs> there you have it, you guys. So, Nakima, before you go, because I want to bring my next guest, tell us where to hit you up. Where can we bring you? Like to speak? Maybe we can um put you on shows, magazines, like my magazine. Give us some contact information, information, directors. Absolutely, and it's simply NakimaLee.com. If you just go to N I K. E E M A L E E dot com. All of my contact information is right there. Um, and you can go to Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Everything is branded as Nikima Lee. And I look forward to interacting with your, with your guests, your listeners, for anybody who just wants to chat. Um, I will be in Philadelphia tomorrow. For any of your listeners who are in Philadelphia, just go to the website and get all the information. It's It's been a pleasure, and I'm so blessed. And thank you so much, Miss Vanessa, for having me. I appreciate what you do. I really do think that you are a powerful woman of God, and you are really moving in your brand and, and, your, and your purpose that you're moving in is really going to touch so many lives. So thank you so much for having me. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much. I do appreciate that. And I will be connecting with you again. Like I said, I'm really sincere about this. And you said, yes, I want to bring you back. I want to give you more time to do what it is that you do. And you're absolutely right. We must know. We want our mates to see into us. Exactly. We must see ourselves also. So I took, I've taken copious notes in the chemo. 
So we're going to bring you back on, and we're going to let you do your thing, what God called you to do. All right? Amen. Thank you. My pleasure. You guys, that is Nakima Lee. Listen, guys, this episode is going to be available upon demand in a matter of minutes after my last guest comes on. So I want you to go ahead and get that information and invite her to your church, whatever it is, invite her to your conference, whatever it is you want your mate and yourself to really see into you. Because so, sometimes we don't need to see ourselves. We don't know what it is we love or or, or who we are. You know, sometimes we base our identity on, on salaries, our job occupation, our family and friends. So we're lost in the mix. You want to know who you are first, okay? Are you starting a new business, releasing a CD, writing a new book? Consider Mitchell Productions for your web design services. Visit www.mitchell-productions.com for portfolio samples, specials, and package prices. Remember, a website is not a luxury item. It's a necessity. Check out mitchell-productions.com or find them at facebook.com slash mitchellproductions.